what's going on boys and girls we are back with another 400 ex video uh last video it was everything that i saw was wrong with it in this video we're going to be fixing majority of those items so that i feel more comfortable going out and riding this so and that's what it's mostly about if you feel comfortable with your machines you will ride your machines more and some people know their machines aren't right and they still ride them and kudos to you but I like going out riding and ending the day with my unit still running to be in the tank. I don't like going out and breaking my stuff. So you can see we already have the rear fenders off. That's because off camera, I took uh, that old crusty filter, made it a little less crusty. I took my can, my can in, my can in the. Yeah. I took my K&N recharge uh, kit, sprayed it with the cleaner, washed it out, let it dry, sprayed it with the air filter oil, let that sit for a little while, and then it was back on there. Doesn't look brand new, but it looks a whole lot better than what it did. Now also, uh, today, I want to change the oil, so I got uh, new OEM Honda filters, because I mean they weren't that much more than buying the cheap brand or the whatever uh i do have about two quarts of oil here and i got a brand new uh four quart uh bottle of just a standard honda gm4 uh regular non-synthetic oil i have a ngk stock replacement spark plug the dpr8z I have these ODI Rogue. These are the mountain bike lock-on grips. And let me tell you, these things are soft and they are sticky. Oh man, so I think I'm gonna like these. I normally do the OEM grips, but I want to do something that wasn't OEM uh, this time around. And the good thing about it is that if I don't like them on the 400, I can put them on a 200. And then I can take the OEM grips from the 200 and put them on a 400 so always got options uh, I also have these white hand guards and the reviews from the white hand guard said that the hardware that comes with them are trash so I went to Lowe's and I got stainless steel replacement hardware a lot of reviews said everything else was fine but just that the hardware that comes with these are trash. I have a air filter lid because this one didn't come with one. And if you saw how that filter looked, it was just nasty. And I think I think this 400EX has, has been underwater at some point as well. Uh, because the mud and dirt and stuff was all in the intake tube. So I think this has been submerged uh, at one point or another. Uh... And in a separate video, I'm going to use this iPhone endoscope, uh, and I'm going to see if we can identify what piston is in this motor. Got the air filter cleaned in, got the new lid on, uh, Cortland, the guy my buddy with the other 400EX, the yellow one, he gave me uh, his tack meter. He said he wasn't going to use it. I'm not going to turn it down. I got it all ran. I got it wrapped around the spark plug wire five times. Held on with some tape and some zip ties. And I did get the hand guards on. And these things right here are, they're pretty solid. They were more solid than what I thought. I got my logo on the left side and the QR code on the right side. And... They are slimmer than what I thought. I thought it was going to be taller. Cortland's is like maybe four or five inches tall. And these are really, really slim. But I do like that it has like a sport look. And the white is closer than what I thought. But it's still not like perfect. But, you know, whatever. So now, we're going to go ahead and do the oil change. Uh, the bolt on the side right here is a 12 mil. And on my skid plate, it has a hole for the oil to drain you can see my finger uh the bolt on the bottom of the oil tank is a 14 millimeter and then the bolts on the 
old filter housing is a eight millimeter. So let's crank it up. Let's let it run for a second. Let it get uh, warmed up, get that oil circulating. And then uh, lift it up a little bit more. And then I'll go ahead and get the oil changed on it. The oil didn't look too good when I checked it. So it looks sludgy. I'm thinking it was running rich. Oh, uh, everything is on. Let's see what this bad boy is, if it's gonna start up. Jesus Christ. All the oil is drained, block, oil canister, and whatever little oil was left in the oil filter housing with the new oil filter. Draining filter change, 1.85. I'm just gonna put two in there. I buy my GN4 by the gallon. So um, two pints is a quart, and the, this biggest measurement is a pint and an eighth. So I'm gonna do three pints which will be one and a half quarts and then I'll figure out whatever it is to get that point eight. But one thing that I use a lot for my mini bikes and ATV oil changes is this blue one because the end, the funnel end is a lot smaller. Most automotive funnel ends are huge and they don't fit inside. But if you can see the difference between this car automotive funnel in and this funnel in it is a whole lot smaller and it's also longer so when you take the dipstick out and make sure i need to clean that out because it's got dirt all in there but this will fit down in there like that and it gives you enough room to actually fill it so you're not just wasting oil trying to get oil in there so if i can find one of these on amazon i will have the link in the description but this makes filling up four wheelers my mini bike the z50 uh little kids 110 to 50 cc and my 125 and even the 200 it makes it so much easier to fill it up because just the fill holes are smaller and then having a little bit more distance to be able to do it so like i said i'm going to put Probably 1.9. I might not put two, but I'm at least put 1.9. I'll probably go ahead and just put an even two in there. Just go ahead and fill it up. 
But remember to clean your funnels before you put oil in it because you don't want that grime, dirt, and grit. Well, you can see it right there. You don't want your, you don't want that dirt, grime, and grit circulating through your motor, going through your cylinder walls, scratching them up. You ain't gonna have a little compression. You're gonna be pissed off. So heed the warning. Clean your whatever this thing is called. Clean it. I guess you can't put two quarts of oil just in the oil tank it'll overflow so I put two quarts in and it probably has 1.85 in it now from what was filled out of it and I also just destroyed a brand new shop rag because now it is saturated with oil so good job Darius good job so yeah, at least the oil is now changed. New oil, new oil filter. And I got a question for y'all. What do y'all do when y'all have skid plate and do y'all change the oil? Because the oil, so the oil hit the frame and then just went all in the skid plate. So now the skid plate, the skid plate is just a layer of oil so how do y'all get the oil what method do y'all use besides removing the skid plate so that when the oil is coming out because my oil came out I hit the frame and it like rolled under the frame and then landed in the skid plate so do I need to cut that hole bigger or what tricks and tips do y'all have for that because I'm not going to ride. I think the Honda uh, FSM says yes. 600 miles on an oil change. And I'm probably not doing 600 miles in a year. So probably once a year. But still, this looks terrible. And I'm going to have to power wash this to get that oil residue out. Because that's not going to do anything but attract uh, dirt when we're riding. Which is going to require me to clean even more. So y'all let me know the trick for not having the oil hit the frame and then just sit on oh, my battery died and before just to sit inside of the or on top of the skid plate y'all let me know i need to change spark plug uh so when i do that and do the light that'll be it all right y'all so i had to order a spark plug remover wrench from amazon because this spark plug hole in here is really, really tight. And your standard 18 millimeter socket is not going to be thin enough. Hold on. How am I supposed to get this, this socket wrench out? Your standard 18 mill, uh, your standard 18 millimeter uh, socket wrench socket is not going to fit down in the hole. And the issue I'm coming into right now is that the tool I have evidently is too long to come out once the spark plug is loose. But that's that's nice. So I have to get this off Amazon. It has to be a real thin wall uh, socket tool. I don't know if they make a 18 millimeter thin wall socket that will fit down in there. A couple of YouTube videos I saw them using 18 millimeter sockets. They had put it 
they used their grinder and grinded it down, ground it down, so that it was thin enough to fit. So I didn't feel like doing that. Plus, I didn't have an 18 millimeter uh, deep socket because none of these kits come with an 18 millimeter deep socket. Spent like seven dollars for this. Every bolt on this bike that I've touched so far is tight as hell, uh, which is not really what you want to see when you're taking the spark plug out. How am I supposed to get the spark plug out? Like I said, and this is just a tad too long. So let me get the spark plug out and then I'll be back with how it looks. I thought it was coming out, but it's not. So, all right, finally got the spark plug out. But we do have a NGK spark plug. DFPR8Z, which I believe is the exact same one. Yeah, DPR8Z, so it's the exact same spark plug, like for like replacement. It actually looks like it was running pretty good. I thought that it was running uh, a little lean, but this spark plug, it's not focusing on the tip. That's what she said. But this spark plug actually looks really, really good. So I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised at that. I was expecting this to be uh, way more white. But it actually looks like a pretty good burn. And that was with no air filter. So now I'm, run, now I'm wondering with the air filter on, since it's getting less air, it may start running rich. So this carburetor might actually be rejetted, uh, at least for the exhaust, because it'll be running lean. And then you add the exhaust and the no lid, then it'll be running really, really lean. But this looks like it might actually be jetted correctly. So if anything, it may run a little rich since it's getting less air than before. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this wired endoscope and I'm going to put it down the spark plug hole and see if I can identify the piston. But this video is already too long, especially since I still need to do the rear axle hardware. So I will do a whole separate video uh, using this and I'll have a link in the description for it as well. It's my first time using it so I can see how it works. It's small, it has lights on it. I can adjust uh, the light, how bright the lights are. So this will be a separate video with me trying to identify uh, what piston is in this and if it is a standard bore or a big bore. The seller told me that it was a standard bore uh, Wasco piston. So we will see if any markings or numbers uh, will let us know if it's a standard bore or a big bore, if it's a Chinese piston, a JE piston, a Wasco piston. I'm going to do a video of a comparison and see what it has. It has a niche head, which is, you know, it's pretty much standard at the market uh, for these 400s. And we'll see. I'll be back when the first spark plug is put in. And this is how I did my wiring for the RPM tack. I did four wounds. I have some uh, aluminum, like HVAC tape around it and then zip ties just to hold it. And I did five wands and it works fine. And I just have it ran and zip tied up around the wiring harness so it's out the way. So if the wiring harness is, uh, is good, then the wire ran for the RPM tech. Uh, the tech uh, hour meter should be good too. So I'll be back when I'm taking that wheel off. So spark plug is back in. I just wanna say, that I've modified this a little bit and it works a hundred times better. It's amazing what happens when you cut off, I don't know, it's about an inch and a quarter or so. Big difference. Transforms the whole functionality of this tool for use on the 400EX. Cut that little bit off, works like a charm. It was a tad bit too long you know, for, for, for some, you know, too long is, is not a good thing. Chop the nub off, works perfect. So since I won't need this for another 16 months, I need to put it somewhere so that I don't lose it. So I just want to share that little tidbit, and I will leave this on the Amazon review as well 
uh, for 400 EX. Cut that nub off, works perfect. It was like seven bucks. So now I will get to doing the axle hardware and the wheel hub and all that fun stuff. Actually, changed my mind. I will save that for a different video because I couldn't find, I don't think, any video about the uh, pin style Dura Blue axle. All I could find was like their axle under this one that uses the stock uh, hubs. So I think here I'm going to be done. Uh, we did the oil change that made a big old mess. Uh, what I read is that if you take like some construction paper, or something like that then you can make like a little like a little uh, like a little pathway for it to come off and more down into the hole so next year or end of this season when I change the oil I will try that but I will not be taking the skip plate off uh, when I take it outside I will spray this with like some awesome or mean green or whatever I need to spray this thing down anyway uh, well, I make yeah because I want to clean this off before I go riding, so I don't have this dirt and stuff tracked all in there. So did that? Did the air box lid? Cleaned the air filter? Did the hour meter? Did the hand guards? Spark plug? Oil filter? But yeah, I feel like this video is long enough, and I did switch out the battery. Uh, so yeah. I think I will call it here, and I will do a separate video that'll probably come out the day after this one, maybe even the same day uh doing my axle woes uh on this dura blue x33 pin axle so yeah i think i'll call it here so everything you remember think it build it and most importantly enjoy it so after these series of videos this will be pretty much done for now it'll be done good enough and we're going to go to uh, busco beach on March 2nd for Spring Blast, last spring, something like that. Spring Blast Bash? I don't know. But March 2nd will be there. It will be me. It will be my boy Cortland with the yellow 400 EX. Then uh, his friend will be there and he'll be driving Mean Green, the, the 200cc Chinese uh, four wheeler. So this video might not drop until that day maybe the day before uh but if you do see us out there come by and speak tell us what's up uh but yeah we'll be there probably about 10 o'clock to about probably 10 p.m so about 12 hours so if you see the white 400 ex and the yellow 400 ex and a green four wheeler that's me come talk to me all right peace